start talking about the future, let's talk a little bit about the present. I tried to pull together a few interesting facts to just help convey how important TV is to the world today. So let's just go through those facts really quickly. First interesting fact, five hours per day. That's the average amount of time an American spends in front of the television. And in fact, people are watching more TV now than they ever were in the past. That's pretty amazing. Second interesting fact, $70 billion. That's the annual advertising spend in the U.S. alone on TV. There's still no better medium to reach a wider and broader audience than the television. And as other technologies evolved and changed, TVs basically stay the same. And actually, to many people, that's actually pretty comforting. All right, we're going to try our best to, to keep this going so we can, uh, we can keep connectivity. All right. Uh, OK, sounds good. All right, I keep trying. Yes. Don't move. <laughs> All right. Sorry about that again, guys. Okay, so what you just saw actually, we did a search for house, and uh, what we pulled up is a special series result. And what the series result does is actually pulls together all the different content that's coming on TV and all the different content that's coming on the web. So you can see actually, you know, like in uh, 2 2, you know, it's like coming, house is coming up on USA, it's also coming on Fox, but all the content on the web is also immediately available for you. One of the great things that's happened over the last few years is you can get full episodic content directly from the web, whether it be for, for free on sites like Fox.com or for pay on sites like Amazon DMD. And now we can enable users to have a single experience across both. Because to a user, it doesn't really matter where I get my favorite content, whether it be live TV, whether it be DVR, or whether it be the web. They just want the quick and easy access to it. So, Let's uh, actually go ahead and uh, click on. Click on one. Still not working. Which one do you want? I did. Let's click on back. Yeah. Let's go ahead and click on back. What we can see here is I can actually, I can actually record it in the future on, on TV, or I can just go to one of my favorite sites. So let's go check out Amazon.com. Now what you're going to see here is we're going to go directly to Amazon's page. The transition from TV to web was totally seamless. I didn't have to get a different remote control. I had to change my inputs, <coughs> right? The web became a natural extension of the TV itself. So I can go to Amazon, and here I can actually play the episode. I can actually well, I can buy the episode. I can actually buy a few episodes, or I can just play a trailer. Let's go ahead and play the trailer. And now I'm just watching TV. Just like that. Right? It's being streamed directly to my television using a standard browser. It's pretty cool. Now, I can actually go back and let's say I want to find another episode. Well, I could just as easily go back to the series page. Or, I could, with one button, flip back to live TV. A cheating boyfriend almost two years ago. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta pick a different uh, channel next time. <laughs> Just like that, the TV became a single, the TV and web became a single experience. Where I can navigate between TV and web, I can get access to my favorite content in a very easy way. So search just makes things easier to find your information. But it's not the only way. Right? There are times when I don't know what to search for, I just want to lean back and browse. We thought of that as well. We can be much smarter about how you browse for your favorite content as well. So let's actually pull up the home screen. Now the home screen here is actually your quick launcher to all your favorite content and applications. And you can customize it as you see fit for a user. Now one of the things we've done is that we've actually worked with some of the content aggregators out there, like Amazon VOD and Netflix, to actually embed the experience directly inside Google TV. And we can actually work with so what you're going to see here is, let's go ahead to the Netflix folder. You can see, this is actually a personalized view specifically for me. Here's my instant queue. Here's my suggestions as well as what I recently watched. So let's go ahead and check out suggestions. And the great thing here is these suggestions are all based on what I've watched before 
on Netflix. So it's personalized. It's just smarter. And I can access all of this instantly, right? So I can go to 24, that, that sounds like an interesting show. And here, I'll be able to actually watch all the different content immediately for me. Oops. And in this case, we won't. Okay. So, now browse can be a much more interesting experience as well. Okay? But we can do more than that. The web actually has a lot more content than just your favorite TVs and shows. Right? Over the last few years, there's been an explosion of compelling online video. Whether it be from long-tail content creators, like you find on YouTube, or professional studios, like ESPN or CNN. Well, we can all make that accessible to you as well, which has never been accessible before. So let's pull down the quick search box again. And this time, instead of putting in a search query, let's type in a URL. Let's type in YouTube.com. And we can go directly to YouTube. <laughs> to get some interesting search results. And now, I have access to everything that YouTube has to offer. And the great thing here is, it's just as easy to go to any site on the web as it is to go to any channel on your television. Right? It's just seamless. It's just integrated. And of course, you know, we can go through, there's millions of, of videos on YouTube. We're going to show you some interesting stuff on TV. Let's look at the YouTube ones. Um, but there's a lot of great compelling content. But the cool thing here is that it's not just about YouTube. We can go much further than just YouTube. And the other great benefit of the web is not only is it unlimited in terms of the video content you can get, we can actually allow it so that you can be much more personalized and have more control of your experience. So let me give you an example. So this might resonate with those who have young kids in the audience. So I have a two-year-old son, and he loves to watch Sesame Street. Actually, let me correct myself. He loves to watch Elmo on Sesame Street. Where he actively dislikes all the other characters, which makes it <laughs> impossible to actually watch a full episode of, of Sesame Street. Well, thankfully, Sesame Street has solved my problem. So let me show you. Let's actually pull down the quick search box again. We'll type in an Elmo this time. And here again, you're going to see different results. I can see Sesame Street's coming up on Friday. I can actually go directly to Sesame Street or, or actually even see a, a video on YouTube. But in this case, the top result is actually a bookmark that I've already set. The quick search box gives me immediate access to all my bookmarks. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. Now, Sesame Street has a ton of great telling video content, all the content they've ever had, I don't even know how many years Sesame Street's been around. It's all available for you instantaneously. But the really cool thing is that I can filter that content based off my personal interests, or in this case, the interests of my son. So you'll see these are actually just Elmo videos. So let's actually take a look at one of them, Alphabet Rap, in this case. This is one of my favorite. And what you're going to see here is that Sesame Street has built a custom playlist based off Elmo, specifically for me. So now I can just lean back watch. Come on, Rishi. There you go, I'll dance, I'll dance with Elmo. I think you not love Elmo, let's be honest. <laughs> because that's good. Sorry, we'll play that again later. No problem. <laughs> What's amazing here is that I've just created my own episode of Sesame Street. Right? This is something you just can't do on traditional TV today. Okay, let me give another example. So back in January, um, you know, I was working hard, totally uh, blanked out when I got home and forgot that I missed the State of the Union speech. <laughs> they always have friendly, friendly ones. <laughs> so I, uh, I totally missed the State of the Union speech. I came home and thought, okay, great. I missed it a couple hours later. I'd love to watch it. But on TV today, I was actually basically stuck. Right? Because TV thinks in terms of channels and shows. So in this case, neither the channels or the shows on TV were actually giving the content I was looking for. They're doing analysis about the speech, but not giving me the speech itself. Well, now that can change. 